If you love classic fall baking as much as I do, you've got to make my apple crisp recipe. Silky cinnamon apples under a crisp crunchy topping and yes, you should have it with a scoop of ice cream too. Hey, you're watching Preppy Kitchen where I, John Cannell, teach you how to make delicious homemade dishes to share with your family and friends. This apple crisp will be ready before you know it, so let's get started. First off, let's make that crisp topping. Into a medium bowl, we're gonna add three quarters of a cup or 90 grams of all-purpose flour, half a teaspoon of salt, half a cup of packed brown sugar. You can use light or dark, it doesn't really matter, and that's about like 100 plus grams. Depends on how hard you pack it. Give this a little bit of a break up and a whisk. Now we're gonna add in one and a quarter cups of old-fashioned rolled oats. Those are the big ones, not the little chopped quick oats. Mix it up one more time. <laughs> And now I'm gonna add in three quarters of a cup or 170 grams of cold butter that I had diced into little tiny pieces. I like to do this step ahead of time and then just keep it in the fridge for when it's ready to use. Right now, we're gonna do this the old fashioned way and use our clean hands to mix this up and just smush it together. You kinda of wanna smash the dry ingredients into the butter to create a crumbly crisp. So I'm using both of my hands to kind of smash and slide the butter together. Whoa. Keep it in the bowl though. You could also make this with melted butter. Like if you don't want to touch this very much, you're not into that, just melt the butter, pour it in, mix it up and set it aside and then crumble it. That works too. Okay. So as you smush it together, you'll see large clumps forming. And once you're there, you're basically done. I like to make one mega clump and then just break it up into a crumble. This is going to be a perfect crisp topping for my apple crisp. This is ready to set aside, wash those not clean hands anymore, and get your apples out. To fill the baking dish, I'll be peeling and slicing 10 small apples. That's just under three pounds. You could use a little bit more or a little bit less. It's totally up to you. It's a really forgiving recipe, so don't stress about that. Today, I'm using Granny Smith apples, but you can use Honeycrisp, Gala, really any eating apple is gonna work pretty okay for this. If there are any idle hands in the house with nothing to do, put them to work on prepping these apples. It'll make everything go super fast. But if that's not the case, then maybe put some music or your favorite show on and get to peeling. Right now I'm filming this video just before the start of apple season, but in a few weeks, I'll be able to go around some of the older apple trees that we have and pick and use them for recipes that I like like this. I have no idea what any of the varieties are called though. We just have these like ancient gnarled apple trees left to their own devices for decades. So we've been pruning them and clearing all the invasives around them so they'll kind of be more productive and happy. And some of them are delicious eating apples. And then some of them are like cider apples. So they're full of tannins and definitely not for eating. I learned that the hard way. <laughs> but they're perfect for making like alcoholic apple cider with, not pressed cider. If there's any apple recipe you want me to try out, let me know in the comments. Many of the recipes you see me film have been suggested by users. So I love your comments and I always find it interesting to see what people wanna make. This by the way is a recipe you do need to peel the apples for because the skin is kind of tough. Okay, clear this off and on to the next step. Once your apples are all peeled, it's time to cut the flesh from the core and then we'll slice them up. Now we're gonna slice our apples into mm, like roughly quarter of an inch pieces. You wanna have a uniform size, not for the aesthetics, just so they all bake at the same rate. I always say this, but no, 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 yes, yes, yes. You wanna use your knuckles to guide the blade of your knife so your little fingertips are kept safe and sound. No dessert is worth a cut. Although for me, it's the cheese grater. That's the most dangerous thing in the kitchen. And you can let me know in the comments if you think it's something else. Maybe the mandolin. I don't even own a mandolin specifically because I'm so scared of them. <laughs> okay, take a breath. Apples are all chopped. We're gonna transfer them into a large bowl and then get to mixing with all the rest of the delicious ingredients. Okay, so we're ready to mix all the ingredients together, starting with one tablespoon of cornstarch, and you don't have to do this. I'm just gonna sift some in as I toss to kind of get it evenly distributed. It's not a big deal though, but it makes me happy. It sparks joy. Okay, there's that. Now one third of a cup of brown sugar, 
and you can use light or dark brown sugar. And in a pinch, you could even use white sugar too, it's fine. I just like the extra bit of like caramel flavor the brown sugar gives you. Let's add half a teaspoon of cinnamon in. I'm using some roasted cinnamon, which is supposed to be more sweet and intense. There's actually very many varieties that you could get of cinnamon, so interesting. Whenever I have an apple dish, I am hard pressed to not add freshly grated nutmeg. I love the flavor and the aroma. So I'm just gonna grate a little bit of nutmeg, maybe like a quarter teaspoon into the apples. And if it's nutmeg, it has to be freshly grated for me. I just think it smells and tastes totally different, but I'm probably just being crazy. You can let me know if I'm wrong. Okay. If you love apples and lemon like I do, go ahead and add a little bit of lemon zest in there. Maybe just a teaspoon, a little goes a long way to giving you a wonderful, just like bright taste to it. I'm gonna squeeze about two tablespoons of lemon juice over the apples right now, as well as one teaspoon of vanilla. Ah, uh, there you go, maybe a little bit more. Shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> Give this a good toss. We really wanna combine all the flavors together. Oh my gosh, the smell is beyond. These kind of crisps and crumbles are really easy because you don't have to worry about any kind of pastry crust. It's just gonna bake the way it bakes and be delicious. There's almost no prep, aside from peeling those apples and slicing them. Once your apples are uniformly coated, it's time to plop those into your eight by eight inch baking dish. It could be a nine by nine. That'll work too, so don't worry about it. Even seven by seven. <laughs> We're ready to assemble. So have your oven set to 350 so it's all nice and hot. And we're gonna be dumping the apples in, but not all at the same time. You wanna add a couple layers in bit by bit. So layer number one, spread it out. And I have a quarter cup of butter that I diced into smallish pieces like I had for the crumble. Just spread that through here. The butter's gonna make everything a little bit more luscious and silky. It'll just be really good, trust me. Then add more apples, more butter, more apples, more butter. I nibble on a few of these apples off camera and they are so good, so good. All right, just pat everything down so it's, you know, mostly level. Add any remaining bits of butter in here. And now top with your crisp. So here, you can kind of just dump it out and if there are any big pieces, you can crumble them up a bit. This is a too much is never enough situation, so don't be worried if it's mounted high. <laughs> okay, uh, press down. Right now it looks like it's really high, but those apples will soften when they bake, release their juices, and it'll all kind of come down a bit, so don't be worried. This delicious dish is ready to go into the oven at 350 for an hour or until the top is golden and juices are just bubbling through. You'll see and smell what's happening. In you go. My apple crisp is out of the oven and it baked for a little bit over an hour. I wanted to get a really nice golden top and it is smelling so good. It's time to cut into it and plop on a big scoop of vanilla ice cream. I don't know if it's much to look at, but this is a dessert that you just can't beat and it's a must make when apples are in season. If you like this recipe, check out my apple playlist, all my favorite apple recipes and one playlist for you. Now it's time for a bite. That is just so good. You know it's good, I know it's good. Let's make it together. If you like my videos, hit that like button and subscribe and I'll see you in the next Apple video.